This video tutorial is going to cover how to create shift templates within your shift based positions within Sub It Up. In order to access this screen, you want to go to the left hand side under schedule and then go ahead and click on configure templates and then you can click on shift templates, which is the next option that will bring you to this screen. Now, initially on this screen, you're only going to see the position that is your root position, which is in your, uh, the position that's loaded in the top left corner of your screen. And uh, if you need to load up other positions, feel free to click in the white bar here to load up any other positions you want, as well as um, if you want to load up all positions as well, you can do that. This is an important step in creating and setting up your Sub It Up account because these shifts that you create are going to be the shifts that your staff input availability for. They're going to be saying whether they are available or not for these specific shifts. And when you go and you auto generate a schedule, these are the shift times and templates that the system is going to reference. And you can also use these templates to easily manually create a shift on the actual schedule or calendar as well. To get started in creating your first shift template, you'll go up to the right hand side and select add new shift. First step is to select the position which you want to create a template for. So this is going to be for our weight room staff position. And then if this shift template is going to be active or not. So for now, we're going to leave this as active and I'll explain later the difference between an active and an inactive shift template. Next up will be the shift name, and this should be some kind of description or something uh, that the employee, when they see it, knows what exactly type of shift that they are working. Uh, if you have multiple locations, uh, so if you are a uh, organization that uh, has staff that within this position will be sending staff to multiple locations, you'll definitely want to include that location here in the title. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say for this specific position, this is a morning shift and it's going to be at Smith Hall. If you only have one location, you may not need to put your location for each individual shift, but if you have multiple locations, you definitely will want to do that. Next up is selecting a color for the specific shift templates. So uh, when you're looking on the calendar, do you want these uh, th this specific shift template to display in a certain color? And since this is a morning shift, I'm gonna go ahead and make it yellow. Next is the shift start time and end time. And this is going to be very important to how you initially set up your position. In order to put in your start and end time, you can just go ahead and select your start time, which I'm going to say minus 7 a.m. and your end time, which I'll put in as 10 a.m. Now, if you have set shift time, so these are, you always need somebody from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., for instance, and then 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, those are the shift templates that you're going to want to go ahead and build out in those specific times. If, however, you adjust your shift times depending on your employee's availability, you may want to consider making smaller shift blocks. So maybe only hour long or potentially even less amounts of uh, shift blocks for the amount of time that you need coverage throughout the day. What the system will do at this point when you auto generate is it's actually going to go ahead and it's going to try to group shift blocks of time together. It's going to try to get employees to work back to back shifts in those smaller blocks of time. So what this is going to eventually do, it's going to lead to different differing shift lengths uh, across the day. So if this is the option, definitely you may want to consider that. And just keep in mind that somebody can be scheduled for just one of these shift templates, even though the, the system and the algorithm is going to be looking for um, those back-to-back -back shifts. So just make sure that this shift template time is a time that you would be comfortable for your staff uh, to be able to work that shift. So if my minimum amount of time I want a staff to work, my staff to work is one hour, I would not want to go any smaller than one hour shift blocks. The next item is a shift note. So uh, for the shift note, any shift time the shift template is used, this note will be there for the employees to see. Next up is creating a shift as a task. And for more information on that, you can check out this uh, question mark that's over on the right hand side. But uh, essentially tasks are used to assign a task or a chore to an employee who's already scheduled. So these can uh, be overlap overlapped with a currently scheduled shift. Um, so if, for instance, if you wanted an employee that was scheduled from nine to five, but you wanted them to be in a meeting at 3 p.m., you might wanna schedule a task for that meeting at 3 p.m. Uh, so just keep in mind the task is not a regular shift. The task cannot be used on the time clock and they will not appear in the payroll reports or time clock reports. Um, so just make sure that uh, all that is okay before you select the create as task button. I'm gonna not create this as a task. And then for GL codes, so if you have GL codes loaded within the system, 
um, you can use utilize this drop down and attach a GL code specifically for this sh shift template anytime that it is used. The next tool here is the rate adjustment tool. So if you select the rate adjustment tool, uh, this is used to change what their normal pay rate would be for the specific shift. So if it's, and maybe an extra bonus, maybe uh, for working an early morning shift, uh, my staff will get an additional pay rate on top of what they're normally paid. If that's the case, you have four different options here. Um, you have a straight dollar amount. So this is a, they get a, um, an additional amount of dollars per hour added on for the specific shift. Uh, the percentage is they get a certain percentage that's going to be um, uh, added onto the shift. A, uh, the, the X, the multiplication is also is you're retimesing it. So if you're doing time and a half or double pay, you can use the X or a flat rate. So for this specific shift, it is a flat rate. They get paid this no matter what that they are, uh, no matter what they are originally set up in as in under pay rates uh, on the staff page. Um, you can use the flat rate. So I'm going to use the X here. I'm going to say it's going to be time and a half because this shift is so early. And for more information on this as well, you can hover over the uh, question mark here and it will kind of break down to you what each one does. Next up for daily occurrence, uh, you'll need to put in the amount of staff that you need each day of the week that you need them. So I only need one person Monday through Friday for this specific shift template. But these can definitely change depending on uh, what your business needs are. And then you'll need to go ahead and go over and make these active. So on the left hand side, if these are not active, then the system will not know that you are that you need um, employees for this specific shift on these specific days. Now you're gonna see this yellow uh, triangle that shows up here. And this is basically telling you you don't have enough staff availability for this shift. And this is normal because you just created this shift. Uh, so once you have staff members um, that are going to be input or they're gonna be put, inputting their availability, you'll see their name start popping up here um, as available to work. The only time you would need to go in and actually select people to work and say that they are available to work this shift is if you hire them to work this specific shift and you know they are available right off the bat. Uh, in that case, you may wanna go ahead and, uh, and tell the system that they are available since when you hire them, you know they are available for this specific shift. Otherwise, you can leave it for their availability and once they fill out their availability on their end, they'll be able to go through and, uh, and input what they're available for. After you've inputted all these, you can go ahead and save and your shift template has been created. So when you're here, it's just gonna tell you uh, the status. So if it's checked, this means it's active. Um, if it's not checked, that means it's not active. Uh, and if you want some more information about um, what that means and how that may affect your schedules, uh, if you are using maybe a seasonal uh, template or you have certain times where you need to collect availability for one shift while another schedule is already in use, you'll wanna check out the video that's down below on seasonal and holiday templates and scheduling using shift templates. Anytime that there is a icon like this here, it means there's a rate adjustment. So here it's uh, 1.5 times. Uh, so it's time and a half is just showing me what that rate adjustment is by hovering over. And then here you'll be able to see the start time, end time, shift length, total amount of shifts and days of the week. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and duplicate this shift, so um, everything else looks good here, but I wanna change, uh, maybe my next shift is from 10 to one. I can use this duplicate tab on the far right and I can select the position. So I can even copy over this shift template to another position if I wanted to. But I'm gonna choose my weight room staff. Uh, and this is actually going to end up now being a mid shift, but still at Smith Hall. Uh, it's gonna ask you if you want to copy over the availability um, that was associated with this shift, but since it's brand new, um, there is no availability right now associated with it. And then for, uh, for tasks as well, uh, do you want the, um, this to be created as a task? And this was not already a task, so I do not want it to be a task. Once you hit duplicate, everything has been copied over, uh, save for the rate adjustment. That is something that is not copied over and you'll need to go in and input manually if, if you need a rate adjustment for this specific shift. So I'm gonna go over and hit the edit button. And now I'll be able to change my times to 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Everything else is exactly the same. No rate adjustment needed and I can hit save. Now it's gonna ask what I wanna do with future shift templates. So anytime you come in and you edit a shift template, um, the system's going to ask what you wanna do with people that are currently working those shift templates. You can either leave them as is, so uh, the, the anything that's currently on the schedule will not be adjusted, or update these future shifts. So anything that, any schedule that's, or any shift that's already scheduled will be updated to reflect these changes. So for me, I'm gonna say leave them as is, and this has now been scheduled. 
Now I'm gonna load a couple other positions here to show you what a fully built out uh, shift template um, may look like for a certain position. So I'm gonna choose my equipment staff, my front desk position. So when we talked earlier about those smaller shift blocks of time, uh, this equipment staff position is built out exactly like this. So um, the smallest block of time that my staff can work is one hour. So I set up one hour shift blocks from the start of when I need people until the end of uh, and the end of the business day. So you can actually sort uh, these these uh, templates here. So I'm going to sort by start time, and you'll can see you can see it's 8 a.m. to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, all the way down till 3 p.m. Um, so when I actually go and I make a schedule and I auto generate a schedule, then uh, these all these shifts will be filled, but my staff it will do its best to have them filled back to back shifts. For my front desk supervisor position here, this is some, uh, a place, uh, a position that has two different locations. And in those locations, it's uh, the hours are exactly the same. So if I sort again by my start time here, you'll see that uh, they're identical, um, identical positions and identical shift templates with just a differing uh, place of where they take place. So we have north and south for each one. Now this may seem like a heavy lift at first as you're building out all your shift templates, especially if you have a whole lot of them, but keep in mind that you only have to do this once. And after you do this and build out these shift templates, they're gonna be here and make things a lot easier into the future for when you're collecting availability and generating a schedule. Lastly, I just wanted to show you what it's going to look like from the employee side. So now that you've built out all these different shift templates, uh, when they go to put in their availability, this is what it's gonna look like from here. So as you can see here, we have for our front desk position, these are the ones that are um, larger blocks of time, but they are uh, in, two different in two different locations for each one. So you'll see those all built out here. The equipment staff position has uh, hour by hour time blocks. So they'll be able to go in and put in their availability for those time blocks as uh, here as well. And then the weight room staff positions that we just created will show up here on their availability. So they're going to be putting in availability for exactly what you put in onto your side of the system and be able to tell you whether they are available or unavailable for those specific shifts. And that was how to create shift templates when you are using a position that uses shift-based availability. As always, if you need, have any questions or need any further support, please feel free to send us an email to support at subitup.com or give us a call at 617-401-8733. Our office hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much.